Today, let's talk about how I went from being a level one hoarder to completely beating my shopping addiction and now calling myself a minimalist. Whether you consider yourself a hoarder or just someone with a little bit too much clutter, getting a hold on your shopping habits can be infinitely beneficial, not only to making real decluttering progress in your home, but also not having the clutter kind of creep back and pile up again in your space. So this is my first recommendation start decluttering. If you're trying to beat a shopping problem, a shopping habit, start decluttering your space and you, I promise, will realize that you just don't want to get into this mess again. You realize that it's kind of wasteful to have all this excess and yes, donate it, absolutely, but it will make you more mindful in the future of what your shopping habits are actually doing to the environment and it just kind of puts everything into perspective. So if you want to beat a shopping addiction, start decluttering cluttering immediately. There's a couple different type of shoppers. There's the impulse shopper who's like at the grocery store, has a list, suddenly sees a box of their favorite cookies on sale and then buys it even though it's not on the list. I think we all do this and to a degree I think this can be totally fine and not a problem at all as long as you keep this in check and don't do it too often. Then there's a compulsive shopper who actually intentionally goes out shopping to try and alleviate some kind of discomfort that they feel. Guys, I've done both. I have been both in my life, both an impulsive and compulsive shopper. The problem with me is I never decluttered. I kept accumulating more and more, not having a respectful perspective on what this kind of consumption actually does to the environment. I was really kind of mindless and I would even go as far as to say irresponsible in my shopping habits. So I would just accumulate more and more to the point where my home was completely out of control, extremely hard to keep clean and to maintain. And it was just a very big problem. I would have whole cupboards, whole rooms stuffed full of things, both that we used, garbage, and things that we didn't use at all. I think one area that a lot of people really, really struggle with over consuming is in their closet with clothing. The world now consumes about 80 billion billion pieces of clothing each year. This is up 400% from two years ago. This is insane. Again, getting that perspective is incredibly, incredibly helpful to helping stop the habit, to beating the addiction, whatever you call yourself. Any kind of shopping habit, once you learn actual facts, you know statistics, it really, really helps. So when it comes to your closet, I have a couple fun ideas. There's something called a 30 day shop your closet challenge. Now you can look this up online. Each day you can do something different, like pairing two pieces of clothing together that you've never paired together before. But the main thing is you are stopping immediately the influx of new clothing items. I would consider accessories shoes in this category. Not only does this save you money, but it shows you where there might be gaps in your wardrobe. It's a useful thing to do, I think, every single season. Whatever you haven't worn at the end of the 30 days, donate it. Declutter it. You might think, why would I donate it? That's, again, just contributing to the problem, especially since only about 10% of the items, the clothing items that are donated to thrift shops and charities actually get sold. The rest end up in a landfill. So you might be asking, why would I contribute to this problem? What a terrible idea to donate what's left over. Here's the thing, you're going to donate it. You can try and sell it on Marketplace. You can repurpose the cloth material, whatever. But the thing is, is you're going to now have a new perspective and you're not gonna let this happen again. Your new mindset shift is going to help you from filling up your closet with things that you don't actually wear to this level. So this is a one-time deal. I had to do it too when I decluttered my space. We got rid of about 85% of our family's possessions, which is insane. My job now is to not let that happen again. Moving on from the wardrobe, the closet, let's just talk about consumption in general. Anytime you go to the store before you buy an item, here's some really, really useful things to think. And these really helped me when I was curbing my shopping addiction, stopping my habit. Does it have an immediate purpose? I do ask myself this with the exception of clothing that my kids can grow into. But other than that, I do 
not buy items that do not have an immediate purpose? That's a really helpful question to ask yourself. You can also ask, is this item going to benefit me like in the long run, in the long term? Is this a one use item or is it something that I will use within the next six months and beyond. Borrow it from a neighbor, get it for free off of Marketplace. If it's a one use item, my goodness, do not buy it and bring it into your home. Also, I like to think, is this a piece of future clutter? Can I envision myself decluttering this within the next year? Oftentimes, this is amazing, oftentimes yes, and I will put the item back. This has stopped me from buying so many things that I don't need, just realizing that every single item that I have in my my home is a potential piece of future clutter and it's something I'm gonna have to pay for again and again and again with my time and energy and effort not only just storing the item costing money but realizing that it's going to take me and my muscles decluttering that item again and like I said once you declutter your space you do not want to get into that mess again because it is a lot of work also asking yourself do I have something like this already at home and this is a really, really good one because often we don't need something so specific that another item can't take its place. Like if I don't have a wick trimmer specifically, I'm never gonna be able to burn my candles again. No, you can use a pair of scissors. So do you have something at home that does the function or that is similar to the function? If the answer is yes, just skip it altogether. Just try a no spend challenge or a budget freeze. This is where, and again, you can look this up. There's so many any cool ideas on Pinterest. You can obviously buy gas and food and pay your rent and your cell phone bill. But other than that, as far as miscellaneous extras, you just freeze your bank account. I also like calling this a fill your bank account challenge because sometimes I think it sounds scary. <laughs> like I'm not gonna spend money. It feels limiting. It feels like you kind of want to rebel against it. I think that's just kind of the human psyche. But if you say I'm filling my bank account, it's a positive action. Fill your bank account freeze your spending and that's a really good way to jumpstart and kind of just rip the band-aid off and just do a no spend for an entire month. What I did at the very beginning of my minimalist journey when I was really trying to get a hold on my shopping habits is I would actually write a list. Every time I wanted to buy something, I would write it down. I would not purchase it and I would make myself wait a week. This is kind of a long time. A lot of people will say only wait three days. I waited a week. You can wait as long as you want, but I definitely re recommend three days at the minimum. Start a list of the things that you want to buy and do not buy them on impulse. Do not buy them compulsively. Think about the items first. Going along with this idea of writing things on paper, I love the idea of writing down every single item you pass up for an entire month. If you held something in your hand at the store and considered buying it even for a minute and then ended up putting it back, write the item and how much it costs. At the end of the month, tally up how much money you saved by not impulse or compulsive shopping. Another thing that you can do when you've got an item in your hand and you're thinking about buying it or an item in your online cart is how many hours do I have to work to own this item? Ooh, this one helped me again so much. I would translate this into actual hours, physical man labor. And when I realized it would take me five hours of work, suddenly it is not worth it. So it's easier to put the item back. It doesn't feel like so painful. And again, this just goes back to FOMO. Everybody else has it, or I don't want to be caught without it, or I want to up, or what if I need this, or it comes in handy. It's this FOMO mentality. Suddenly, if you put it into actual dollars and what this is going to physically cost you working hours to buy it, it just becomes easier. And suddenly we want to miss out. We are happy to miss out. Decluttering your fantasy self is incredible incredibly beneficial when you're trying to curb a shopping habit or an addiction. Thinking about what items you can practically use in your life based on your lifestyle as it exists right now in real time is so helpful. Instead of thinking, I want to be that mom that puts on a little black dress and a pair of heels, but realistically, that's just not you. I broke my foot a year ago, so buying heels makes absolutely no sense. Even though I would love to get into a pair, it just doesn't make sense. My foot is still healing, that's not practical. Buying really, really cute workout clothes when you don't even go to the gym is not the solution. And then if you continue to go, sure, then buy the clothes. You're not buying the clothes 
for your fantasy self, you're buying the clothes for your real practical everyday life self. And that makes so much more sense. Have a list on hand of go-to activities that you can do whenever you feel tempted to shop. I think a lot of times we just shop out of boredom. This was me. I shopped out of boredom along with compulsive shopping, along with impulse buying. It was just boredom as well. And I realized that unless I replaced the bad habit with a good habit, the habit would stay in place. So write down a list of at least 10 things that you could do on any given day, like journaling, reading, going out in nature, drawing, working on your music, playing with your kids, doing a craft, whatever it is. And that is your go-to list. Many impulse and compulsive shoppers do feel regret after buying the item. I, that is me, 100%. I know this is true and we deserve better. Our environment deserves better. Your home deserves better. Your mental health deserves better. So I am here to cheer you on. I am here to support you. Here is another video on the screen to give you more motivation. I will see you over there. Bye.